here. We are halfway through day two of the second annual Astronomic Park. Energy is hot, so let's are having a good time, and it seems like all of you are as well. If we want to turn down that music for a second, our next guest to the day is already from the highly anticipated conclusion to the Firefly Trilogy. I bring to you from the movie Three from Hell, Otis Driftwood and Captain Spaulding, Bill Mosley and Sid Gentlemen, welcome. Sit down wherever you would like. Hello, hello. Hey, hey all right. Hey, everybody. What's up? Hey. Oh, shit. 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 O
play. <laughs> now we really do shit the bed. <laughs> what do you say to do? Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, you guys, through all this time, have continued to work with Rob in various forms on various projects. So I'm sure it's like a family-type relationship whenever you guys re-enter that fire flight day. But as far as those specific characters, did you have to go back and maybe re-watch some film footage, maybe get back into the Otis mind frame, or is this something that you're carrying under the surface all the time that we should be afraid of? Well, yeah, that's for sure. I'm always Captain Spock. Yeah. <laughs> Started to shoot. Um, I did have a moment where I had some lines to deliver, and it just wasn't happening. You know, I was uh, kind of uh, stumbling on the lines. Did a couple takes of that. I'm like, you know, blathering. And uh, and Rob was kind of looking at me like, you know, dude. And uh, <laughs> and, and, and I, I just I, I said, give me a second here. And I sat down. And I just I, I just you know kind of got quiet. And this voice in my head said. Get out of the way and just let Otis do this. And you know, there went the like the insecure actor, like, is that my good side? You know? And Otis just said, you know, shut the fuck up. Sit down. I got this. And for the rest of the rest of the time we shot, I was I was good. Everything was cool. Just get out of the way. That's that's basically it. You know, you don't really have to I don't know how, you know actor has a different process but um, for me I didn't I didn't go back and watch a bunch of stuff you know because you know it's, it's, you, uh, you start imitating yeah. yourself yeah okay That's he's true. in there Spalding is in there well those are definitely some beloved characters as I can see by the assembled people in this room do I got any uh, questions oh and, and oh, Chop Top is in there too by the way Don Will Hunt <laughs> we got a question right over here no specifics, please, or Rob will kill you. Yeah, right, yeah, kill him! I know you guys can't say much, but how do you beat a badass ending like Devil's Rejects? You'll like, see. How, how, how do you, I, mean, <laughs> how do you, I think everybody in this room can agree that that was badass. How do you, how do you talk that ending? It's called Rock Zombie. I'm getting back to the non-disclosure again. <laughs> Any other questions that aren't trying to get somebody killed in this room? Anybody? Can I get a hand somewhere? Anyone? Oh, we got one up there. We got two up there. Of course I should have done it in the front. Were you guys surprised that there was a part three coming? The question was, was they surprised that there was a part three coming? I was. Yeah. 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 I was. I thought I mean, we were dead. <laughs> Because uh, <coughs> doing conventions like we do, people would come up and say, you know, is, is there going to be a part three? And I would go to Bill and say, Bill, is there going to be a part three? And he goes, no. Nope. And I said, why? Because, because we're fucking dead. <laughs> that is certainly a good reason. So it was most of a surprise on your face when you got this call from Rob saying, look, I've got the next one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he loves us together. Yeah. Uh, and he, you know, got us together and said, okay, we're on for number three. And, all right, cool, let's do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it was a vegan lunch. <laughs> a vegan lunch. That's right, remember that? It was yeah. like a vegan place. Not the so the fate of the fireflies was sealed over some tofu and some nice greenery. Is that what you're telling yeah. so me? Some of like uh, cheese that actually is made from nuts. I, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand any of that shit. <laughs> I thought I saw another hand over here. Yeah, we don't have that. No, Did no. Somebody have their hand over here? Yeah. I was wondering, is there one out of the three that you guys like filming more specifically, or one that was like more grueling and harder to do? Each each one had its own elements to it that made me like it for one reason or another. I, I don't put one ahead of the other. It's just, I had fun doing three films. And, uh, you know, actually, the, uh, Devil's Rejects was a little easier. We were just talking about uh, in the House of a Thousand Corpses, I have to wear uh, contact lenses. Because I'm, I'm an albino now. Somehow I got 
an albino. <laughs> Part two. And, and how the fuck does that happen? <laughs> donkey kicks you, you go cross-eyed. Donkey yeah, kicks you in the you go Tan cross -eyed. Tanning bed, I guess. Uh, but anyway, so uh, that was easier on the eyes. Uh, I just remember, I remember, uh, it was a Super Bowl, I think, of 2004, maybe. 2005, whatever it was. And uh, I was over at Rob's house in Los Angeles. We were watching the Super Bowl. And he said, we're going to do the Devil's Rejects. And I said, wow. I, and, uh, and, and he said, uh, but in this one, you're going to look a little different. He said, first of all, uh, I want you to grow a beard. And I had never grown a beard before. So I said, well, fuck, I've never grown a beard before. I mean, how do you, what do you do? And he goes, stop shaving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going for the obvious. <laughs> And then this this beard, I didn't know I didn't know that beard, that Otis beard was in my chin this whole time. And uh, I've come this beard and that was cool. And it was uh, actually it was a lot of fun because uh, Sid and I had a lot more screen time together. Yeah. You know, in uh, in House of a Thousand Corpses, you know, we see Captain Spaulding at the beginning and the end, but we didn't have a lot of time uh, between and, uh, and it was and, just the last scene when I picked up the girl. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You were in the back seat. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's the only time we worked together. Yeah, wow. yeah, wow. that's right. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, so it was a lot of fun working with Sid. We really, we really had a ball. Yeah, we yeah. had a good time all the time. Yeah. And especially like I, I just remember, you know, kind of, you know, feeling, feeling that family affection. Especially when uh, Sheriff Wydell was beating the shit out of Captain Spaulding in the, in the burning house. He's like, you know, hitting him with a cat and prod or something. I was like, ah, poor guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I'm tough. <laughs> he is. He can take a lick at and keep on taking it. Yeah. But we had a lot of fun doing that. So that's, you know, that was that's a big plus for Devil's Rejects. Uh, you know, let, let's take a poll, a, a very impromptu one. Who uh, prefers uh, House of a Thousand Corpses? The Devil's Rejects. Yeah! Okay. And who's, uh, House of, who's a Devil's Rejects person? Okay. See, it's like, it's pretty fucking 50-50, which is very cool. I, I love that because they're two completely different movies. That's what I was going to ask you about. Oh, they are two completely different films. The first one can be described as almost like a House of Horrors. Yeah. It's like a John Cameron movie absolutely. with... You know, uh, Devil's Rejects being more of almost a road crime picture. Maybe I'm gonna get you killed, but if you had to describe what type of movie Three from Hell may be, would it fit into either one of those constructs, or is this something that we've never seen as part of this particular story? <laughs> Aim the laser at him. No, Aim the laser at me. It's alright. Yeah. No. Uh, you'll see. <laughs> That's it. I'm sorry. So, I don't do well in court. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, from some of the pictures we saw, that in itself might have just gotten you killed. Yeah, exactly. Because there have been some photos from the set leaked, obviously, things we have seen, some new characters we have seen. Uh, one, Mr. Baggy Bridges seems to have a family resemblance to somebody sitting up here on the dais, and I'm not trying to get into the specifics once again, but maybe, is there another clown in this movie? <laughs> I'm doing terrible, people. Somebody save me. Who's got a question? Well, I'm going to pick it up, boys. So, this is going to be something totally not about the movie, but about you guys personally. If you guys, since we're all sitting here admiring you and all your crazy glory and stuff, what, if you guys could be in front of any panel that you would want to be in front of and actors that you would really want to see who would they be and also what do you guys do to unwind i know sid i know you like i know you have a pet snake and it's good to see that you're safe from those fires in california and i know you like literature i know you have moby dick was one of your favorite books and i sound like a stalker but <laughs> what do you guys do what do you guys do yeah, I'm a scorpio my favorite color is blue <laughs> i've given up chewing gum for 2019 Sorry, weird uh, question. So, what what is the question like? If we so were all sitting here admiring you, if you guys could be sitting and listening to some panel, maybe actors that influenced you or people on movies that you really respected, what would it be? I don't know. You, you take that one, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
it's a very it's so many question. actors that I uh, whose work I admire that it'd be tough to you know single things out. Uh, the one thing that <clears throat> you would probably really enjoy if, if you did a, a panel with Sean Connery, okay? Sean Connery, who was a, just a regular guy. I did Diamonds Are Forever with him, and uh, he was just great to work with. A lot of fun. He was one of the guys. Uh, he hated the wig. Okay, and at the end of the day, when they holler rap, he just grab it and rip it off his head and throw it in the air. And if there happened to be a hairdresser on the right when it landed, okay, but if not, oh, tough shit. <laughs> but uh, you know, great guy. Omar Sharif is a great guy. You love to hear all of his stories. The guy who was uh, actually a doctor in Egypt who became a world famous actor. You know? um, a lot of really interesting stories out there that people never really hear about. And right now, we're all, all we're talking about is House of Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects, and we ain't saying shit about three from now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, between us, we've done a hell of a lot of films, okay? Um, so... Yeah, uh, Lon Chaney Jr. too. Man. Yeah, Lon Chaney Jr. was my mentor. So now you know why I'm fucked up. <laughs> uh, great guy, um, very giving, very helpful. A lot of willing to pass on his family legacy to anybody who wanted to latch on to it. Uh, it was great, great work on it. Well, since you've definitely been playing monsters for quite some time, that connection with one of those classic movie monsters, you recently played Jebediah Lazarus in the movie Hanukkah that was released this past winter. What, can you tell us anything about that? Yeah. <laughs> that I can't. I didn't sign shit. Well, it's out. It, it, it's out. So if you want to look for it, it's called Hanukkah. Yeah. You should look for it. You should get it. Yeah. Did you get paid for that one? Huh? You got paid though, right? Oh, yeah, I got paid. And the check there in the bank. Yeah. Um, and you didn't get hurt? Or else the guy would be dead. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't get hurt. Um, yeah, a yeah, hell of a film. It's supposed to be the first Jewish-based horror film, slasher film. And on my Instagram page, somebody said, well, what about the... Uh, the Golem? No, no, no. no. Uh, 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 Christ. The, uh, Schindler's List? <laughs> the, 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 the film about Christ is where they beat the shit out of him. Uh, the Passions of Christ. The Passions of Christ. Yeah, so true. what about the Passions of Christ? Like, yes. Christ was a Jew and horrible things happened to him. But it wasn't a fucking horror film. <laughs> oh no, I don't know. <laughs> what is it that he, he takes a flame and keeps on praying? Alright, so because I don't have a death wish, I'm gonna go ahead and specify of the first two movies, what was your guys' Phew. like I got you. Thank you. So I don't wanna die. So um which was the what scene was the most fun to film? Not like your favorite, but the most fun. Which scene did you guys enjoy the most? The ones we did together or Just both separate. Separate. Well, my. Uh, how about? How about? Can I? What about the question? What is my favorite of Sid scenes? That's and maybe like he that. could. Sure. Uh, he had a favorite of mine. Sure. I think I just had a my favorite of Sid scene was was the opening of uh, House of Thousand Corpses. Yeah. In the uh, you know the, yes. Yes. the murder museum. Oh, yeah. your grandma. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> That was awesome. Was, Tidy fuck the stump! Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's a whole other day. That's a whole other thing. I tell you, we were talking, when we shot the, um, uh, the special features part of that uh, thing, uh, we were talking about um, Tiny, and I said, yeah, mush mouth motherfucker. Uh, and, um, so I think it was you who said, Knock, he's knock. stump rope. He's stump rope. Yeah, right. tiny and stump sure, rope. Yeah, tiny stump rope. And Sherry looked at me in all honesty and she said, stump rope? And I said, well, before you get your first piece of ass, 
you got to practice on something. And Tiny just couldn't give up the stump. <laughs> and then that became the whole, oh, you know, I knock, knock, this stump. Yeah. Knock, knock. We had a lot of fun with that. We had, uh, we had, some, we had some leeway on that one. Yeah, a lot of leeway. <laughs> but I always thought stump rope was where you actually stood on a stump to that is actually work, work, on, work on the cap. Yeah. That's, that's and if you back them up, they're going to be stump rope or else they start kicking, which is yeah. not good. <laughs> anyway, I'm from Illinois, so that's a whole different, we got a whole different deal. We are doing things. <laughs> Let's see if we can find a question that doesn't in the questionable territory. Yeah, yeah, lift this out of the gutter, please. How you doing, Bill? Hey, good. All right, hey, man, how's it going? It's good. I have a question, will we ever see a Corn Bugs World Tour? You know, yeah, I, or any of your music on tour? Uh, you know, uh, that's a good question. It's a real good question. Um, <laughs> I would have to say uh, probably not with corn bugs, but you never know. I haven't seen Buckethead in like almost 10 years. Uh, and uh, I just worked with Phil Anselmo, and he's, uh, yeah, thank you, and he's uh, uh, Bill and Phil, Songs of Darkness and Despair, just what we all need, a little more darkness and despair. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, yeah, and uh, I think, I, did I give you a copy of that? No. Oh, fuck. Are you still working with Warbeast on the Mr. Machine project? Yes, 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 we're, we're, we're working hard. Um, and so, uh, but, you know, they just lost their lead singer, Bruce Corbett, just uh, passed away, I think, last week or 10 days ago. So, uh, you know, we're kind of on hiatus there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're working hard. We already got one song in the can called Meth Mouth. <laughs> yes! <laughs> so that, that's coming. And uh, maybe some more spider mouth. That's so. super cotton mouth. You know, I wanted to do, actually I wanted to do some uh, campfire songs, so that might be coming. Kumbaya? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, along the lines of Kumbaya, actually, Bill, I wanted yeah. to take it into kind of a personal area for you. Recently, you marched with the Los Angeles Unified School District teachers in a show of you know, union force. Uh, as a member of sag Astra, how important is the union to you, and how important has it been throughout your luxurious career? Uh, the only thing they're good for is making sure we get paid. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's their only job. Well, no, actually their, their well, job is to, to help protect them. us, yeah. okay? And now their, their job is making money. They're, co they're, they're costing uh, actors, uh, all kinds of money to take classes and seminars and all kinds of bullshit. Now it's just become another money machine. Okay? When I first joined SAG, my initial um, dues was $100. Today it's $3,000. Okay? So it's another money machine. Corporate America, fuck you very much. <laughs> That's a hot ticket for the first one. You didn't expect that answer. I, 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 I love the union. I, I think it's great. Uh, I'm getting a pension now, which is great. It's really good for... Yeah, the pension is good. Right? Yeah, the pension. I'm liking the pension. And I, and but there I, are some people in Washington that have a problem with people getting pensions. Well, uh, I'm not voting for them. <laughs> but I also like the, uh, they have a health plan too, so that's pretty cool. And it's covered by two daughters and me, and I just got married a couple years ago for the first time in my life. And, uh, and, my wife. and so we, uh, so it covers my wife too, so that's, that's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I like that part of it. Yeah, by the way, we, uh, yeah, we, uh, we actually took our honeymoon to Iran, or Iran as I like to call it, but everybody was in Iran. <laughs> I ran, and uh, we went there uh, on a, like a tour, and it was a lot of fun. You but you know, I got to say, when I travel internationally, and uh, you know, I'm coming back, and they're taking a look through my uh, passport, and you know, going, oh, "Whoa, what were you doing in Iran?" You know, like I'm all ISIS or something. I said, uh, "Honeymoon." They go, "Like, holy fuck, get out of here!" <laughs> Honeymoon. You're a nut. Bill Mosley, international spy. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Uh, so what comes next for both of you? Bill, I know you, there's been a movie called 80, or a TV series that now is called 86 Zombies. 
that's coming up that you're working on? Is that? Yeah, why not? I'll, I'll, be, I'll be number 87 as long as the check clears and I don't get hurt. So what do you got going on that you can tell the people Well, you know, about? I actually I was just here in Detroit uh, a couple months ago doing a movie called Handy Dandy. And uh, it's an evil puppet movie. I mean, some of you probably were a part of that. Thank you very much. Uh, it is an evil puppet movie, uh, my first. I've done a lot of evil, different kinds of things, but puppets, no, never before. Uh, so that's good. And that should, uh, I think that's... Coming out one of these days. I also was in Sheboygan, Michigan. Uh, yes, doing uh, Crepitus. Uh, that's a scary clown movie. And of course, I learned at the feet of the master here. So, <laughs> the big feet of the master. So, uh, that's cool. C-R-E-P-I-T-U-S. Which apparently is the medical sound of bones cracking. Or something. Crepitus. My Crepitus. I, I got yeah. And I eat children. I mean, you know, I mean, crepitous stuff. Yeah. I got six films coming out. Uh, we're not going to talk about three from hell. Uh, but um, in April, a film called High on the Hog, which is about a farmer, me, uh, whose uh, family's owned this farm for five generations. I promised my father that I would never sell out to the corporate farmers, uh, but to kind of make ends meet. I just plant a little weed in with the corn. So that's that. And uh, apparently now I'm the original Jewish slasher guy. <laughs> right? I know. Yeah. And uh, Cynthia, which Bill and I are both in, is on DVD right now. Uh, and I uh, love this track. Um, Scott Taylor Compton. Huh? And the, yes, it's about a, a woman who tries and tries to get pregnant and then finally does uh, to mixed results. Yeah, very mixed results. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I think I saw a picture from that, Billy. You're a little bit of the, uh, you're, you're dressed as a neutral, I guess would be the word. I am, uh, yes, yes, that would be the word. I play Buttercup uh, in a blonde wig and pearls and uh, flip flops. <laughs> And I'm, I'm very good. Alternative lifestyle. But uh, Sid actually, Sid plays a detective, and actually, didn't you win like an award for best actor? I won uh, best supporting actor. Yeah. Oh, wow. uh, Who did you support? So <laughs> stupid I am. It was the first time I ever played a cop. When I first started off, I should have said, "Excuse me, sir, I'll play the cop." You know. But no, I had to wait for. 57 fucking years. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. Any other questions out there? I, guess. I knew I had more questions out there. I mean, I'm up front. I mean, I'll take the mic. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, between, separately between you two, what's your favorite kills with House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects combined? I mean, I mean, I guess you could say minus Fish Boy, and I mean, I don't know. I mean, you could include Fish Boy, but what's your favorite? I mean, we didn't see Fish Boy get for, Yeah, well, fished. for me... <laughs> well, I think the girl gets shot in the back of the head. It wasn't a scene that I was involved in. I mean, you didn't kill a lot but, of people. But when Kate Norby got smashed all over the fucking street... Oh, with the truck, <laughs> you know, oh yeah, that was the a street, big one. So if a car's going to hit her, car comes by, doesn't hit her, and you go, wow. Boom! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Otis, Otis, Otis set that one up, though. Yeah, yeah. 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 Spread her shit all over the world. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, I have a question um, about the newest movie. You can't. Go. 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 Okay. Yeah, go ahead and ask it. You can ask it. Yeah, I don't know if it was anything. Just say one more time. I was just curious because there ain't that much scene with your character's Captain's party. I all I want to know is that we're gonna get more scenes with him in a new movie, like a lot more scenes compared to the other two. We can't tell oh. you anything. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for asking. How about this, Ryan? To spin that question, who got more jealous over screen time during the course of the three films? You don't get we jealous over screen time. <laughs> Any questions? Are they going to get me yelled at? I know I saw some hands. Anybody? Is Satan still alive? We can't tell you. It's going to turn out bad. It's going to ask a couple questions. Oh, he 
guys work with um, uh, uh, Ray Wilson yeah. and uh, Chris Hardwick. Chris Hardwick. Yeah. Yeah. Two comedians, two relatives, like very famous comedians. Yeah, now they are. Um, was it weird working with comedians during such a serious like horror movie? Was it strange? Were they funny on set? Did they ad lib? Was there anything funny, silly behind the scenes? Not a thing. No, okay. no, I and didn't even know there were comedians. I, didn't even, I, I, I don't think either of us even knew them before they showed yeah, up on the set. You never did a scene with them, did you? Uh, yeah, the dinner table scene when Otis oh, yes, Otis yes, yes, yes. And then, of course, poor Chris Hardwick, I did scalp him a little bit and throw him out at him and oh, fuck him up. <laughs> exactly. What do you do? <laughs> And then, of course, we did bury him, and, well, I don't want to do spoilers, but... Yeah. Well, at this point, the, the duo... He, he wasn't laughing then, let me tell you. The duo of you have become quite legendary as horror characters. You've done so many other films. Who were some of your other favorite co-stars that weren't part of the Firefly trilogy? Uh, Clint You've worked with Daniel, everybody. Sean Connery, Omar Sharif, um... Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw that. I helped Edison invent the fucking camera. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. That's how long I've been. We go best. Uh, uh, one of the most giving and beautiful women in the world is Carol Burnett. I did a film with her called Choo Choo and the Philly Flash. My first day, we were working on the pier, and it was her day off. And she came down to the set on her day off to introduce herself to me and spent the day with me, okay? Uh, and like six months later, I was at Warner Brothers coming back from lunch and I hear my name. I turn around and it's her and she ran out and threw her arms around me and said, you know, please, I'm working on stage, whatever. Come by and talk. So, you know, she, she's just one of those really gracious, beautiful women. Yeah. Any other and I did work with Clint Eastwood on Pink Cadillac, but he, he wasn't really that interested in getting to know me up close personally. <laughs> so, I, I admired him from afar, though. Uh, this question is for Bill. Uh, oh. Recently, you did work on uh, All of Julia Lou's The Almighty album for their intro. Yeah. Uh, I just want to know what you think of their aesthetic and just their whole gimmick as far as like horror rap and how they relate to the horror. Totally down with it, man. A lot of fun. I uh, think they're very cool. Uh, I, I certainly enjoy doing that. I've done that a bunch of times. I've worked with Twisted. I've worked with those guys. I've worked with Child Bites. I mean, another... Like, yeah, yeah. Right? So I, I, I just enjoy that. I mean, I, what I like is how, you know, there's certainly on some edges, you know, horror films and music and, you know, just uh, those, the aesthetic seems to be kind of spread out so that we're all kind of, you know, scratching each other's back. I, I love it, actually. Thank you. Yeah. It definitely seems like horror and rap has been, like, at least symbiotic in some ways, yeah. especially around these parts. Um, now, I, remember, I remember taking my older daughter, when she was like a, you know, 12 or 13, to the pond of Anaheim, California, to see, what was it, I forgot the name of the tour, but it was Eminem, it was Limp Biscuit. You know, and like, you know, they were all like, you know, it was kind of a horror themed show. It's like, I forgot the name of, you know, what the tour was called, but uh, even back then. Anger you know, management, I believe. Anger management, right? Live Biscuit, I mean, is that dating or what? We were at the, um... Something about, is it the Nookie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, second, the second annual uh, Spike Awards. And the Spike Awards at the end of the show, always give a, uh, uh, an award to a musical individual, okay? Like a Lifetime Achievement. And that year, the Lifetime Achievement Award was given to uh, Alice Cooper. Yo, yo. Okay? And in front of 3,000 people, Alice Cooper, Rob Zombie, the Slash on guitar, played School's Out for Summer. Fucking amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, that's great. And actually, we just uh, we, we got passes, <laughs> free passes, uh, to the uh, Rob Zombie Marilyn Manson tour last summer. Oh, the you know, Kings of Evil. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 I don't know about how. I know that Rob Rob 
kicked in. But, uh, you know, Rob, I, I was just, I was really amazed because uh, Rob, you know, I mean, he's, he's not 20 anymore, and man, he was like jumping all over the stage. I couldn't believe how energetic that guy is. And by the way, he's a great, great guy. You yeah, know, he's, the, the first tour that he did, uh, well, the first show that he did in L.A. in seven years, we were there that night. Right. Um, it was amazing. He did uh, Rob Zombie, he did White Zombie, he did all this stuff, new stuff, all kinds of shit. And at one point, he jumped down into the wash pit. Yep. And the next day, I called him and I said, what the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, you know, as soon as my feet hit the floor, I said, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> were you guys surprised? I'm sure you were pleased that he was able to incorporate the upcoming Three From Hell release into the show itself and into the merchandising. Did that surprise you when he debuted that trailer in front of those live crowds the way he did, as opposed to taking a typical route? You know, it did surprise me just because uh, he is uh, he's a master uh, market guy, you know, as well as, a, you know, he's, he's a great promoter. So that made complete sense to me. Um, yeah. You know, it was, it was exciting, actually. It was like, you know, whoa. Because, you know, like, we, were, we were like in the wings and, you know, there's the crowd and there's the screen and it's like, <coughs> oh, fuck. And, you know, then there was like, well, I mean, there was certainly Sid, but there was a picture of me too. And everybody started applauding. I was like, yeah, fuck, yeah. And then, then of course, they should sit again, and it was louder applause, but <laughs> that's, that's okay. After all these years, does it surprise you that it's still such a hot button, such a sought-after property? Well, Even when there's literally no information? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Like, does, does it like the Devil's Rejects and, and Three from Hell and all that stuff is still popular? Yeah, not only is it popular, but yeah. people are demanding a continuation to a storyline that we thought was finished. Uh, I think they look at some of these other franchises that are in, like, in their 12th or, 13, you know, episode 13 of, like, Star Wars or yeah. whatever. They say, well, fuck, man. What about, uh, <laughs> what about Otis and Captain Spaulding? Shit. But at, at one point, uh, <laughs> There was the discussion about doing a, a, a you know, like, you gotta, you gotta do, you know, uh, part two of Rejects. And it was like, everybody was saying, you know what? I can't feature myself doing Devil's Rejects 9. Because yeah. <laughs> it never gets better. The only thing that got better was uh, Rob's Halloween. Yeah. Because yeah. you got the backstory. Now we know yeah. why Michael Myers is fucked up. Okay, because he was dead. he was abused as a kid, taking it out against the world, okay, boom, bang, done. Um, but, you know, episode 19, episode 25, uh, come on, we got more to do. See, I backed away from the business for four years because I was getting tired of just standing up putting a gun in somebody's face. And I said, you know what, if, you, if Hollywood can't figure out and I can do more than just point a gun in somebody's face, then fuck it, I'm out. And um, four years later, I got a call from Rob Zombie. Okay? And that just changed everything. So I really owe a lot to him for having the synapses coming together and figuring out I can do something.